Good evening, Cookstown. I'm Diana Minogue. Coming up in tonight's newscast, we have Prim Fine Bod and the Wounded Warrior Run coming up this Saturday. And I'm Jeff DePalm with an update on all things sports. We also have Shante Taylor with your Hollywood Minute. And I'm Josh Watkins with your Cookstown weather forecast. News break begins now. Last Friday, Ace hosted their annual Print My Bod event where students could enjoy a free haircut, manicure, and other perks. Newsbreak's own Matt Walsh has a story. On Friday, March 27th, Ace hosted the semi-annual Print My Bod event in MSU 218. Various pampering services were free of charge to the students. The Print My Bod event is about uh, just getting haircuts and giving back to the students um, as well, men and women haircuts. We also do eyebrow waxing and henna tattoos and things to that extent. So this is an annual event we've been th doing throughout the years. So uh, this is one thing that we really enjoy giving back to the students. The event featured some of the most recommended hairstylists and barbers that Berks County had to offer. The barber that I went to was really nice, you know. He talked to me, you know, you know and, and was very, you know, respectful. And uh, he did a good job, so I'm very pleased with it. I'm sure this is just, a, it's always been a continued su success. So when we have successful events like we have tonight, we like to continue that throughout the course of the year. And it's very cost effective as well, saving towards our budget as well. Overall, it was a fun night for KU students to get free haircuts, henna tattoos, and eyebrow waxing. Live from the McFarland Student Union, I'm Matt Walsh, reporting for Newsbreak. Thank you, Matt. And now we're going to send it on over to Shante Taylor for this week's Hollywood Minute. Thanks, Diana. I'm Shanti Taylor for Hollywood Minute. Yesterday was the 1st of April, which means the pranks were full in swing. On Life with Kelly and Michael, Kelly Ripple was co-hosting with hubby Mark Consuelos when the topic of conversation shifted to babies. The couple were discussing a story and declaring whether they were expecting baby number four. The audience roared with excitement as it appeared that Ripple was confirming the news, but not so fast. Ripple quickly dismissed the idea, saying time out. While clarifying, she said, I'm not, I'm not saying we're not trying, we're always trying. We tried just this morning. Unfortunately, the couple is not expecting. April's fool's on us. In other related news, the host of The Late Show, James Cordon, was pranked big time by guest and new CBS host Katie Couric. As she was making her entrance, it appeared Couric dramatically fell down the stairs, worse when Jack tumbled down the hill. Gordon quickly jumped out of his chair in awe and rushed to Couric's aid, only to discover the woman who fell down the stairs was not Couric at all but a stunt double. Corden quickly gave his chest in relief as he caught his breath and laughed off in the hilarious situation. That's all I have for this week's Hollywood Minute. Now back to the desk. Jeff, I don't know about you, but I kind of feel like some topics for April Fool's Day need to be off the table, and babies is probably one of them. <laughs> Diana, where's your, where's your holiday spirit? You're being such a Grinch right now. Oh, Jeff, wrong holiday. <laughs> we'll be right back after these messages. Town University, the place you chose to spend your college days. Friendships began, memories were made, and dreams achieved on graduation day. Time moves on, new faces come and go, but one thing remains, you can always come back home. Diana, the weather was just absolutely perfect today. I feel like spring has finally actually come. 
I really hope it just keeps up like this. Josh, what's happening this week? Uh, just give me a second, guys. I'm enjoying this lovely weather we're having right now. How's it going, guys? Josh Walker's here to bring you your weather forecast. Today's weather was perfect. We had a high 63, sun with a few clouds out. Tonight, weather's going to be warm, but we're probably going to have some rain, which will carry into tomorrow. Tomorrow, though, the temperature will be about 68 degrees at a high, so it'll be pretty nice. Looking at the weekend coming up, Saturday is going to be a high 50, but it's going to be pretty windy, so that means the temperature is probably going to get to a low 30 towards later in the day. Sunday will be a much nicer day, though, with temperatures in the high 60s going down to about the low 40s. Monday and Tuesday are going to be pretty similar. Temperatures around the mid 60s going down to only about the high 40s, so it should be a really great way to start off the week. And then Wednesday, we're going to have some rain. So let's see what the rest of the week can bring us. That's it for your weather forecast. Back to you guys at the news desk. Thank you, Josh. It looks like we'll have some great weather for this weekend's events. This weekend, the Military Club will host its second annual Wounded Warriors Run. The run will benefit both the Clipstown chapter and veterans throughout the state. The Public Relations Club has helped to make this run happen by organizing and planning the event. Runners, walkers, and supporters can sign up online, on Facebook, or on the morning of the event. Registration starts at 8, and the race will begin at 10.30 a.m. on Saturday. This is a chance to integrate ourselves in Clipstown University, um, in campus life, college life, things like that. What we get to do is we get to take civilians from outside the campus and bring them to campus, show them what campus is all about, show them what giving back is all about, and show them what the military club is all about. The sorority Epsilon Sigma Alpha will be there to help out at various jobs at the event. We always hear so much about the celebrated Chambliss Research Awards at our school, and now we can actually see them in action. This coming Monday, our very own Dr. Todd Underwood of the Biology Department will present his original research at the Chambliss Re Faculty Awards Research Lecture. Underwood has worked extensively with birds and their living behaviors and has written countless papers on his findings. This lecture will be held in the Alumni Auditorium at the Sub at 4.30 and, we, and will be free and open to the public. So Jeff, I don't know about you, but you know, with the birds and the biology and everything, I think this is something that is definitely worth seeing. I think it is. I had biology last semester, and you know what? I survived it. I think I can, I think I can do this again. Because coming up next, when I come back, we have an update on women's softball and lacrosse, so stay tuned. If you're anything like me, 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 you have some interest in communications, and electronic media is what it's all about. Whether you're interested in radio, television, video cameras, lighting, directing, screenwriting, or any type of editing at all, you know, it's all some form of storytelling. Kutztown University does a great job making us understand the importance in that. Your first semester here, you're taking classes that are also workshops, and before you know it, you begin creating. The courses here get equipment in our hands right away and give us a realistic feel to what a profession would be like. You're shooting video, recording audio, and truly producing something of your own. Our professors provide us with all the tools necessary to become a professional. We have a fully equipped studio and a control room, two Mac labs, multiple editing suites, P2 cameras, DSLRs, lighting and grip kits, and audio recording studios. It motivates us to really learn by making the education a fun experience. You work together with other students throughout the process and learn how to collaborate within a group, which is important. The industry demands working with others. In order to fulfill the major, the students have to complete an internship. Normally our last semester before graduation, the staff helps you line up an internship that requires a minimum of 30 hours a week. We're basically working a full-time job and in a realistic setting, working with professionals and learning the field firsthand. It's a networking opportunity as much as a job opportunity. Kutztown stands out a lot in that way. Not many other schools require such a thing, and it's a great experience. The students carry and represent the school's name, and it's neat to become a part of such a good reputation. That reputation influences our job search. Employers know our school and know what we are capable of. So if you're thinking of where to spend your next four years of college, and you're thinking you're a little bit like me, and you're thinking you're a little bit like me, and you're thinking you're a little bit like me, and you're thinking you're a little bit like me, think about how worthwhile of an experience you want. Think about the Electronic Media Department at Kutztown University. Kutztown University. Kutztown University. Kutztown University. Welcome back, guys, and here we go again as we kick things off with the women's softball team taking on East Strasburg in a doubleheader. In the first game, Kristen had some difficulty getting into any kind of groove, and they got shut out. Dominique Ficar was on the mound here as she pitched five innings with one strikeout and giving up three earned runs. Mary Kosianke came in to close it out and wouldn't surrender a hit as Kristen loses 3-0. to zero. 
In the night game, Kutztown was able to turn the tails on ESU and would shut them out behind the arm of Savannah Nearance as she pitched a complete game with eight strikeouts and no runs allowed. Nearance announced it at an incredible 12-0 with a PSA, PSAC leading .88 ERA. Kutztown was still in a slump on the offensive end until the fifth inning when Sam Fraser smacked a double up the left field line to score Kutztown's first run of the day. Casey Chartagna knocked in a run of her own on a single, followed by Bridget Newman closing out the run with a two-run single. Kutztown would split the series as they would win the game 4-0. Four to, four to now Kutztown prepares for a matchup with Shippensburg for this Friday at home. Speaking of Shippensburg, the women's lacrosse team had a matchup with them in what would be a close one. Fast, fast forward to the end of the first half as Kutztown finds themselves down 9-2. It seems like Ship is going to put this game away, put this game on ice early, but you can't count out these Golden Bears, and you certainly can't count out Jillian Spencer, who racked up five goals of her own to get KU back into this one. After being down 9-2, the Golden Bears would tear it up and score seven of the next eight goals. Now down just two with ten minutes to play, things were getting tight, but Shippensburg buckled down to score the next two goals and would ultimately win 12-10. KU launched off a season high 37 shots compared to Ship's 24, but Kutztown just couldn't find the net here. Courtney O'Neill led the defense with seven ground balls, four draw controls, and two cause turnovers. In, in goal, Abby Cox recorded seven saves in the day. Now Kutztown is looking to recover as they take to the road this Saturday at Seton Hill. Well, that's all I have for tonight, guys. Log on to KUBears.com and check back in Tuesday night to stay updated on everything Kutztown Athletics. That's all we have for you tonight, Kutztown. We'll see you again on Thursday. Be sure to like our Facebook page and follow our Twitter to keep updated with the upcoming news from Kutztown University. For Diana, Shante, Josh, and the rest of the crew, good, good night. night.